Hey, this is Derica Famasili, and welcome to the Happiness Recipe Summit, where top experts are revealing their secret ingredients so you can create your own recipe for happiness. And today's vital ingredient, wait for it, this is so important, you guys. It is controlling your emotions using homeopathy medicine. Now let's think of that first thing first, just controlling your emotions. How important is that? Because you know, I don't know where you're at in life, but I know I suffered a lot with the roller coaster of feeling great and then just like clunk, down, feeling the sadness, just anger, whatever it was. And this was sort of my day. Now that ripped me of my happiness. So if you're feeling me, if you're understanding what that is, whether it's a little bit or a lot of day, this is an important topic. And if you have not heard of homeopathy, well, you're about to now. This is a very powerful medicine and that we have the queen herself of homeopathy here to share this information. And I'm very honored to have her here. Miss Joette Calabrese, welcome to the show. Hi, Derica. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. All right, you guys, Joette Calabrese. I will name off her wonderful credentials here. HMC, CCH, RSHOM is an international home or homeopathic consultant, author, educator, and sought after speaker. She is an honorary board member of the Weston A. Price Foundation, inaugural author of a 10 year running column in their international journal. She raised her now adult children without a single visit to a traditional doctor using homeopathy and sound nutrition instead. She empowers families with the ability to treat themselves using her practical homeopathy methods and of course, guts, spunk, and moxie. <laughs> Please visit her website, joettecalabrese.com, search and read her valued free blogs, and consider joining one of her popular study groups. Again, welcome, Joette. Yes. Thanks again, Der Derica. I'm looking forward to our conversation now. Yes. <laughs> All right. We're going to jump right into it. Can you share a little bit more of you, your story, and how you became a, a homeopathic consultant, author, and speaker? Well, it's, it was a long road. Um, I was six weeks old when I broke out in eczema and uh, it was shortly after my first vaccine, mm. as my mother recalled. And, uh, she, and so we were set on a journey. Dermatologists didn't know what to do. There was, of course, lots of prednisone and mm. ointments and medicaments of all sorts, uh, lots and lots of testing. Um, and it determined that I was allergic to, I mean, basically everything. So um, that was meaningless. <laughs> it wasn't, there wasn't any way to go with that. So my mother, who was a very devoted mother, and she just passed away last Christmas Eve. And um, she uh, just, we went everywhere trying to find a solution to this. We went to conventional doctors, pediatricians, dermatologists, pediatric dermatologists, endocrinologists, you name it, gastroenterologists everywhere. And there was uh, no, no uh, improvement. In fact, it had only worsened. And so through those years, uh, then she started to look into some alternatives. At that time, it was mostly chiropractic that was involved. So we went to chiropractors, etc. And then around my teen years, I had this little respite, which is not uncommon. This is when the doctors often say, pediatricians often tell mothers, she'll outgrow it. Well, indeed, after all those drugs, and I did have a lot, I had steroids and antibiotics, lots of strep throat, lots of accompanying childhood uh, 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 acute diseases. Um, then it did sort of abate during high school years, and then instead it became a gastrointestinal problem. And I had lots of pain and missed a lot of school time, et cetera. And then in my 20s, I actually married, um, it was my first marriage. I'm now in my happily contented second marriage. But in my first marriage, I was married to a neurosurgeon and I married him in my 20s. And so I went back to the conventional way of thinking, conventional medical way. And again, we started all over again, trying to find a solution to now no longer eczema. Now instead it was asthma, and, uh, which often happens. Eczema that is suppressed with uh, medicaments, uh, pet petroleum products, uh, prescriptions, often ends up in asthma not long after. 
So not was asthma, chronic fatigue, et cetera, et cetera. And again, the, the, I went to the conventional method. So by the time that um, I was in my early 30s, I had just about had it. I was done. None of it helped. Chiropractic helped a little bit. I do believe in chiropractic. I think people should have a chiropractor as part of their team, uh, someone local who can palpate and, and they know the person very well, et cetera. But um, I did not get much help um, in any other fashion. So um, I started to study um, essential oils. And in those days, back in the early 80s, uh, the only way I knew to find essential oils was to order them from France and Germany. I really, there were no essential oils. I mean, certainly there was no internet, so it was uh, difficult getting them, but I did. I studied those for a while, but mostly I studied botanicals. My husband and I, my second husband with whom I had my family with, and I moved out to the country. And then from there, um, I started to study botanicals. I um, harvested my own plants, made my own tinctures, and um, et cetera. And it was, and it was, it was a wonderful learning experience. But then, the turning point, the absolute fork in the road, was when I went to a lecture that was being offered by a medical doctor who was no longer in practice. It was a medical doctor who used homeopathy. Very, very rare in this company, in this country. You can find them in Switzerland, Germany, Italy etc. but not in the US. It's extremely rare. And so he was traveling the country uh, lecturing um, on the discussion of uh, vaccines and homeopathy and conventional pediatric approach. So um, I went to this lecture because I was pregnant with my first son and I was interested in, I was considering delaying some of the vaccines or, or not, not, uh, not having them administered um, in total. Um, etc. So I wanted to learn more about it. And that's what this lecture was going to be about. So I was, I had been to many lectures on botanicals and supplements and vitamins and um, nutrition and diets. And I was vegan. I mean, I, everything, I, I've been doing this a long time. Okay. So I've been through every paradigm there is. And he blew me out of the water. What he explained as to, for every disease that a child is exposed to or can get, childhood illness, chicken pox, measles, mumps, diphtheria, really. I mean, who has diphtheria? So all of these diseases, there is a homeopathic medicine that is shown in studies, in the data that will uproot the condition. I was, I'd never heard anyone discuss anything like that. So I, that night, I was pregnant, as I said, with my first son. That night, I bought a very simple homeopathy book and a little homeopathy kit that had 29 remedies in it. I still own it, as a matter of fact. And it's still good. It still works from like 1985, I think it was, 86. Um, and I still own it. And, um, and so I said, I, I've got to learn this. But I didn't have a cause to quite learn it at that point. So I went to a pediatrician and um, to learn about whether or not a, this pediatrician that I'd heard about in my area in Buffalo, New York, would be comfortable postponing my son's vaccines um, or maybe not even including all of them. So I went to go see him and I said, I, this is what I'm interested. And I should have picked up on it. There was a slight roll of the eye mm. that led me to think, hmm, I wonder if this guy's not on board. But I knew no one else and I was naive and, um, and so I went ahead, I went ahead in, in deciding that he was going to be my son's pediatrician. Well, then my son was born and he was perfectly healthy. And this was my first mistake. It was part B, but part of the biggest part of the mistake. And that was, I took him for a well baby checkup. Mistake. Let me explain how big a mistake this is. <laughs> When a baby is well, do you need someone, do you need to pay someone to tell them that the baby is well? Are you, do you not have your where, whereabouts, your wits to say, well, look at the baby's eating, the baby's pooing, the baby's sleeping. Even if the baby isn't doing all of that, you don't think that you as a mother can approach that? Well, I went, my baby was perfectly healthy. And while I was holding him in my arms, the nurse trotted in and plunked something in his mouth while I was holding him. And I said, what was that? Oh, she said, just his polio vaccine, dear. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Right there on the chart, I told you I was going to delay it. I wasn't sure when we were going to do this or what we were going to do, etc. I was livid. Livid. Yes. But what could I do? 
It was already in his mouth. He had already swallowed it. Mm -hmm. Brought him home two, three days. I can never remember now. It was so long ago. It's 33, 34 years ago. Um, two or three days later, he's, he got a fever of 105.5. Now, let me also mention that the day I brought him into that pediatric office, there were no other children. It's not as though he was exposed to someone with a fever. And I never took him out when he was that young. I was not the kind of mother who did that. I just, I stayed home. I cooked. Mm. I had my parents over. That's what we did. And he got a fever 105.5. Now, it would take an idiot not to make the connection between this and then that. And 105.5 for a six-week-old baby? Since when do you see something like that? So I had that book that I bought a few months earlier. I had that kit that I had purchased. And I knew nothing about homeopathy. And he was it went on for two days. My mother was saying, oh, honey, maybe you really want to take, take, take him back to the doctor. And I knew that if I took my son to that doctor, we would have been on that conveyor belt that I had gotten on some 36 years earlier. So I said, no, I'm going to figure this out. I think it's in this book. Now, what, what we call that when someone gets sick, like that, when a child gets sick or anybody for that matter, is vaccinosis. Mm -hmm. And so um, I looked in the book. There was no word called vaccinosis in there. So I went with fever. I looked under fevers because that's truly what it was. It was a fever and it was a very high fever and he had a slight odor. And one of the characteristics of the medicine that I chose, the homeopathic medicine I chose, has very high fever and an odor. Now, since when does a six week old baby have an odor? That's not normal. So it was, by this time it was two and a half days. He had not nursed for two and a half days. I was panic stricken, but I was more afraid if I brought him to the pediatrician, what they were going to start doing. I knew it was going to be antibiotics, et cetera, Tylenol. So um, I found the medicine in the book. It said sulfur 30. I had this kit was sulfur 30X. Now today, sulfur 30C is more, more frequently used. I put the pills in his mouth. My mother was sitting there and my dearest friend was right next to me. And my mother was saying, Hail Marys. And we were, I administered the medicine. <laughs> And within 40 minutes, the fever left. And he commenced nursing after two and a half days. Oh, I mean, wow. it's like the angels were looking down yeah. at us. And we all were, what? what? 40 forever. minutes? Yes. No. That, that was the catalyst. That's what did mm. it. That doctor, what he taught me that day was intellectually fascinating yeah. and made sense intellectually. But this was proof. I had never seen any reaction. Now, as I told you, I was married to a doctor. I used every drug, drug imaginable. We had gone to all kinds of uh, uh, herbalists and you name it. And this, I had never seen anything like that. Mm. Now, I just have to tell you, he's turning 34. Um, actually, he just turned 34. He's never had a fever since that moment. He's never had another fever. Isn't that amazing? This is amazing. It's incredible. I know. I know. Now, does that mean that the sulfur did that? No, I just think it's a fascinating little tidbit yeah. of information. <laughs> but that was my journey. And so I said from that, that time on, I will never take him back again. My subsequent children will never go to a pediatrician. Um, uh, we never went to, actually, it says conventional physician. To be honest, my kids never went to any doctors because they didn't need to because I learned, because I decided down to my toes, I am going to do this. I am the one who's going to do this. Why? Because I am their mother and that's yes. my God-given right. And I am not going to depend on industry or someone who represents industry or pharmaceutical drugs or someone who's condescending, who rolled his eyes when, he's, when I said mm -hmm. that I wanted to uh, potentially uh, uh, postpone the vaccines, nor, which is so relevant for today, should we be depending on government. This belongs, this information, this ability belongs mm -hmm. in the hands of the mothers Mother. and the grandmothers. Yes. This is the, uh, that is my mission. This is the way it was for centuries. For thousands of years, mothers have done this. And an industry took it over, and now we're taking it back. Mm -hmm. Taking yes. that power back. Hallelujah, right? Woo! Hallelujah. Absolutely. Tell us, tell us what homeopathy is 
is for those who have never heard of this before, just kind of give us a 101 of what that is because we're all excited. Okay. Well, home and homeopathy, the preface for the word is unfortunately, it sounds like home remedies, but it does not mean that homeo or home means similar, like homonym means similar or like, and pathy means pathology. So for my little newborn baby, had I taken that sulfur 30X and I didn't need it because I would not have needed it. I didn't have a high fever with an odor. I was perfectly healthy. So if I had taken that sulfur and taken it again and again and again, I would have likely gotten hot and had an odor. So like cures like. And that what I'm describing to you is actually double blind testing. It's done with provers. It's been done for 270 years. And this has been categorized and organized in in in-depth medical books. So as much as I want to bring this to the home, this is really a medicine that's been used in hospitals and clinics and still is throughout the world, um, all over Europe and in India, South America as well. In this country, we lost footing and it's because of an industry um, that we all know about, that we're all learning to to, uh, question um, the pharmaceutical industry has decided, decided back in the 40s and even well before that, that they wanted to get rid of the competition. There were conventional medical doctors and there were homeopathic medical doctors. And so they, there were about, I've written a book about it, about 100 homeopathic hospitals in the US in the, back in the 1940s and the conventional doctors had about 97. So we actually had more. Mm. And so they needed to do something about this constant competition. So they designed a very... Um, stealth, very intelligent, very highly sophisticated and highly financed campaign to destroy the competition. And that's how it ended up dying only in the U S and, or, and, and North, North America. So Canada too, but Mm -hmm. it's uh, alive and well in England, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Switzerland, India, it's and it's right. coming back and it's coming, and it's coming back, back. Here. but this yeah. time instead of coming back through hospitals and clinics it's coming back grassroots it's coming back in a very very big way we have a movement going on now with hundreds of thousands of mothers and grandmothers who are following me and learning how to do this themselves yes yes you're right me and my mother-in-law are one of them <laughs> we <laughs> yes, are right there with you and have been for very long <laughs> I know. I know. so the light cures like i remember when i first heard of that i'm like what like it, it kind of threw me off because it's again not what we're taught in, in the mainstream or how some of us are, are raised but it when you break it down it makes sense like you have to sit with it for a bit you guys and if, if we're going to go into it, I know, in depth a little bit more, but remembering that light cures like. And Shakespeare so- said your poison is your medicine. Mm. The difference is we use these medicines and the sulfur and the gross form will cause certain about amount of symptoms. And once it's highly diluted, and that's what homeopathy is all about, is extreme dilution. So in the dilution process, the toxicity is brought down of the original substance and the curative aspect is brought up. Mm. And it's a gentle stimulus, no side effects, very easy to administer, little tiny pills that I put into my little parched baby's mouth. That's so beautiful. I know. <laughs> it's such a beautiful yeah. story. Yeah, it's a great story. Yeah. And I love great. how, okay, now like cures like, and then you brought it down for us that the toxicity is brought way down here. Because of the dilution process. And so diluted. So it's not like you're putting this crazy like poison for real. Yeah, it's like, not synthetic. <laughs> it's not synthetic. There's nothing synthetic about it. Absolutely. No, all natural. Right. Yeah. Well, I can't get in way until later where I'm like, where do we find these? But not okay. yet. Not yet. Because okay. that's gonna be excited. What have you noticed just in your life or in your in your practice and, and your services? What are the emotions that like the core ones mm. folks are dealing with? Yes. Well, women more are the warriors. Uh, generally, we want to make them into warriors, but there are warriors. It's innate in our gender. We worry, especially about our children, about our, even our own health. Um, we can become hypervigilant. Uh, we worry about our elderly parents. Uh, we, we are warriors on a day-to-day basis. Men who are also, are also worries, they worry in another way. They worry about 
the responsibilities will I be able to now, especially with what's happening, and this course is going to be presented at a different time. We hope things are going to be better in our, in our world in months from now when this is presented. But at this juncture of our poli the political scene and the world as it is, it is it's, it's very difficult on men and they worry about their, not only will they be able to protect their family, but to be able to um, help their families uh, or be able to support them financially mm -hmm. and also, um, um, and not lose face. Oh, Especially yeah. for the middle class, very hard for, for men in the middle class because they're the ones who are the restaurant owners that are all being closed down. They're the ones who own the, the barber shops and the, um, you know, the, the, the clothing stores and et cetera, et cetera. And so this is a very hard time for them. So I see depression, I see anxiety, I see hypervigilance, I see germophobia gone mad i'm so glad you brought that up <laughs> mm. <laughs> i have listen I've, I've been doing this a long time every year because i've been involved in homeopathy for all these years full-time practice for 20 some 25 years and studying it for 33 years 34 years every year there's something that the media brings up that is intended to sell airtime to sell their product and what better thing to do than to frighten people out of their wits. Every year it's the flu, it's Zika, it's, there's always something. Yeah. Um, this one I think was, um, in the beginning, it looked like it was going to be of course international, but all of these things are international. There's no such thing as a flu that's not international. I'm sorry to tell everyone. There's no such thing as whooping cough that's not international because we live in an international world. So people are traveling more well, of course, mm -hmm. not now so much, but we were traveling yeah. more than ever. And so those kinds of diseases were, were traveling just as fast as humans were, of course. So I watch this every year and I see people freaking out and then they get the vaccine for the flu and then they get the flu in spite of that or they get pneumonia as a result or whatever happens. And then they, they forget about it and then spring comes and everybody forgets about it and then the media brings it up again the next fall. And then we start all over again. So if anyone's paying attention, they'll notice that this is- There's cycles. Yes. Yeah. I'm being kind. I'm not using words such as propaganda or, I know. <laughs> or brain but to be honest, be nice. I think that's what's going on. Yeah. And I will tell you, let me just say parenthetically, uh, Dorica, is that I used to work for NBC. Mm -hmm. I actually worked in the marketing department. I was an account executive. I worked in the marketing department. I know what's going on behind closed doors. I know that the news is considered a product. It is a product that I used to sell. And if my numbers, if the numbers of the product were not high enough, then I couldn't get the kind of dollars that the station needed in order to survive. So look, there's nothing wrong with making a profit, but don't lead people to believe that you're giving a pure product when you're not. Right. The news is not news anymore. It is, it is, it has a specific agenda. agenda. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And okay. so, and the agenda has, has, has um, uh, morphed here and there just enough that it used to be purely bottom line, but now the bottom line has to do with who's donating. So mm -hmm. whoever the big donor is, is the one who gets all of the airtime, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And the, and, and the, uh, the, 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 not only the airtime, but the dollars that are put towards a certain kind of thinking and the, on the news. Absolutely. So, and that's, what's creating this, right? Like we're all kind of sitting more at home now in front of these, the news pretty much and all these different devices. And that's, what's creating this emotional roller coaster. We're, we're trying to feel really good. And then bam, here goes this crazy news. This there are too many thing. unknowns. That's one of all thing. the unknowns. There are too right? many unknowns. What's going to happen? Is the vaccine going to be uh, required? Is there going to be um, are they going to close this down again? Am I going to be able to keep my business open? Am, yeah. am I going to be able to go out with my friends again? Will my kids be able to go to school without, without a muzzle and plas plexiglass around them and not able to touch people? How mm -hmm. far and how long will this go on? So, so and, they're, and they're, they are absolute unknowns. Yeah. So what I, once I left working for NBC, that was just before I got pregnant with my first son, and once I got pregnant with him, I left that job and I bought this bumper sticker that was very poignant. And today I still use this phrase, kill your television. 
And I had it in yep. the back of my car. Now, I don't know that people even knew what I was talking about in 1986 with that on my, the back of my car. But that's how long it's been that I've known that television is not something you want in your home. Okay. Truly, you don't want it in your home. You, you need don't. to find your, your information from sources, not the first level, not even the second level, not even the third level. You need to dig and really find out what's really going on and not what you're being fed. Now, my it, guess is many powerful. people who are watching this already know this. But the, for yeah. those who don't, remember that it takes three impressions to convince people that they might want to buy that product or that idea or, to, or absorb that concept into their lives. Three impressions. After the third time they've seen something, they're thinking, well, I don't know, maybe someday, even though they might have hated it the first time they saw it. Three impressions. But by the seventh impression, they're ready, they're ready to buy. So if you hear all day long, you're going to die, people are dying, if you, you, have to, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to scrub things down, don't hug people, don't have a Thanksgiving, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You hear this over and over all day long. After a while, it starts to infiltrate. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how strong a human you are, how strong your constitution is, it is very hard to resist that because we are only human and we are available to suggestion. Yep. Yes. You guys, this is powerful. And I know we've kind of opened this up to a really big, just important topic here, but um, we're going to go back to homeopathy in a second, but I just have to validate <laughs> what she's saying because um, I, myself, we haven't had a television in our house in 10 years. And, um, I still live normal. You guys, like my family still, I raise kids. We're all still, you know, we don't need the television to stay alive, to survive anything like that. We have these natural instincts. And in fact, it keeps you out of that crazy roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to talk about here is that, well, now you're in the roller coaster for whatever, and you can take that television idea and do with it what what you please but just knowing that there is these powerful tools right here in front of you that are natural that are real and work and so when you're going through those things you can go to homeopathy you can go to these natural things that are they don't have the crazy side effects they're not going to suppress anything they're really going to heal heal whatever it is you're dealing with okay you guys so oh i want to go into that for so long but we're gonna we're gonna stop there <laughs> Um, what have, let's see, can you give me examples of, um, let's say someone has just been stricken with sadness, you know, for whatever they're sad, they've been triggered, they were feeling good, then plonk right into depression. What is it that someone can do right then and there to help begin alleviating it? Well, first, I want to just back up a little bit and mention that homeopathy is medicine. It's regulated by the FDA as medicine, even though it does not have side effects and there are no ingredients in it other than the medicine itself. Mm -hmm. um, and so because of that, we want to use it judiciously. We don't want to just say, well, I happen to know what to use, so let's just use it. What I always tell folks to do is use all your other methods first. Go outside for a walk. Make sure you're eating a better diet get away from the grains and the sweets and all of that and go towards a more holistic homemade meal, um, pray, go to church or temple, make sure you're building your life in a, in a way that really gives you a, a firmament. Love it. And if that doesn't do it, and now this person has, let's say it's a woman, okay? Uh, because it does kind of make a difference a little bit, not always, but in the, in the medicine I'm going to be describing now, it's a little more often used by women and children or for women and children. Now let's say, no, it just, she's done all of that. She's going for the walk. She is trying to garden a little bit. She's, if she's in the North, she's shoveling the snow to get out in, the, get, get out in that sunshine and, and taking care of her family and doing purposeful work, I should have said. Purposeful work is key, key. And pur by purposeful work, I mean taking care of your kids. You the, you're the one, you take care of them. Take care of your elderly mother and father. Take care of your husband. Make beautiful meals. If you've got a business, you take care of your business and all these other issues, these other aspects of your life, but find purposeful work. And let's say all of that is not, just not cutting it. The news is just driving her nuts. She doesn't know what to expect. How can I plan on raising my children in a world in which the government is telling me how they, we have to dress? how far we're supposed to be away from each other. 
what kind of, when, what time you're supposed to get out of a restaurant or whether you can even go into a restaurant or how you, how you walk inside of a grocery store. This is, and she's losing it. The most valuable medicine that I find for this particular situation is a medicine called Ignatia, I-G-N-A-T-I-A, -A, Amara is the second word. Ignatia Amara 200. Now there's a 200 after it, it says 200 C, because Ignatia Amara is actually made from St. Um, Ignatius Bean. So this plant is harvested around St. Ignatius Day, generally speaking, which is why it's given that name. And St., um, excuse me, and so Ignatia Amara 200 C means it's been diluted 200 times. That's where the 200 comes in. C means to the hundredth power, highly diluted, highly, highly, highly diluted. So when somebody uses this, then um, they t generally use it twice a day for several days. And we usually see quite an, an uptick in their emotions. Then you stop. This is not something you take forever. You take it until you're very much better and then you stop. And I teach how to use this medicine all the time on my blog um, for free. I have, uh, I have a 12 year running blog that I have populated every single week. I never missed a week, even on the, the day my mother passed away, the day my father passed away, that blog still went up because I promised that I would do that for my followers. Mm -hmm. And so you can learn more about it there, but Ignatia 200C twice daily until very much better. As soon as someone's better, then they stop. If they need to resume it later on, then they start it again. Okay. That's good. And this is also for a child who comes home crying because the teacher made her wear the mask above her nose and she couldn't breathe, or the teacher was unkind, or there was a, a child who was unkind, or something happened that broke the child's heart. And now they're very, very upset. Now, in one day, if, if what we normally do is we tell, uh, we scoop up that child and we listen to the child and we allow them to, to process it by just listening. But if this continues day after day after day, if the child's still thinking about last Thursday or it continually, continually occurs that this, these incidences occur and now the child's having a difficult time falling asleep, which is also an aspect of this mm -hmm. insomnia, incapable of falling asleep properly and they're worried and they're anxious and they don't want to go to school, et cetera. Often Ignatia, Amara, 200 C twice daily is the medicine. Wow. You guys pen and paper. I, I it's a writer downer. It is. You, it's a writer downer. <laughs> yes. This is for all the visual learners, but it just really helps to absorb this information. Certainly if it's your first time hearing this, you guys write your notes, replay, replay. This is very powerful, important nuggets of gold here. Um, can you share with us? Cause I'm just loving these stories. Can you share with us? Yeah. You know, and one or two, let's see, whatever you have that you can share with us um, from a client or someone you worked with that was in this roller coaster of crazy emotional state of being and to now having more of that balanced, peaceful life using this. Well, I will tell you, uh, Dorica, that there are so many people that, that I, can, I would have to do a little composite. And so what happens often, in fact, I was just, someone just wrote to me and said, I learned on your blog, Joette, she wrote to me, I learned on your blog um, I, that, that I could treat my post-traumatic stress disorder that I've been suffering from for 10 years. So this person was having an addiction problem because of the psychotropic drugs that she'd been put on for so many years. Oh, wow. And the psychotropic drugs were not helping her with this horrible anxiety that she had experienced. And her, the kind of anxiety that she was having was not unlike what you just described visually with the ups and downs and ups and downs. And so she used Ignatia 200. Now I had nothing to do with other than I just wrote the blog and she just went there and read it and decided to use it on her own. So not only did the Ignatia Amara 200 C twice daily alleviate that angst within days, she said it was within a week, less than a week within days, but it also helped with the addiction problem. So she was wow. able to eliminate the drugs with the aid of, and I often tell folks, if your doctor's the one who's prescribing all these drugs and is, you're still not getting better, go to the pharmacist. Ask a pharmacist. They really understand drugs and get their advice on how to wean off of a drug. Because unfortunately, 
Most conventional drugs, especially those who prescribe psychotropic drugs, don't know how to get people off them. Mm. They only know how to get people onto them. Now, if you're lucky enough to get someone like that, that would be great. But um, a pharmacist is very, very knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah. So this person, this is PTSD we're talking about, you guys. And yeah, that's emotional roller coaster right there. You know, you're, well, for those, you know what that's about, you guys. But something like this, where you now form the addiction, you've tried everything. Usually that's what happens. You've tried everything possible. And it's like, what do you have to lose now? Right. Brain this, you know. Right, right. And if somebody, if anyone wants to look it up, you go to Joette Calabrese, post-traumatic stress disorder, and it will pop up. You don't even have to go directly to my blog. It will show up. Okay. And it'll describe you exactly how you go about doing it. That is so amazing. Okay. Who is homeopathy for? I know what you're going to say, but let's... <laughs> well, you know what's interesting? Homeopathy is not only for you and your family, women, men, infants, newborns, pregnant women, the elderly, but it's also for pets. I use it on my poodle, Buster. And Buster is 16 years old and he looks pretty darn good because he's only had homeopathy. And so I use it on Buster. I've actually, when I used to live in the country, I've treated cows, I've treated llamas, we had chickens, I treated bees, yes, honeybees. And many people also use homeopathy to treat plants. So farmers often use it for their plants, their crops. And, um, and so it's, it, I can't think of any place where homeopathy is not appropriate. This is so beautiful, you guys. And you're hearing it here. This is the vital <laughs> ingredients to your happiness. Let's talk about some of those. Um, now, there's a lot of things on the market. And I'm pretty sure now, these days, right, there's products everywhere. What should we like do's and don'ts, you know, what should we avoid when we're searching for this medicine? And then what are we looking for? Well, there are uh, several good companies in um, uh, homeopathic pharmacies, uh, manufacturing pharmacies in the US and um, in England and Germany, etc. One of the easiest ones to find is Boron, B-O-I-R-O-N. It comes in little blue tubes. Uh, you'll find that at Whole Foods. You'll find it at Wegmans if you're in that part of the country. Um, you'll find it at, uh, I don't think Trader Joe's, but a lot of the, those kinds of um, somewhat holistic stores carry it. But you'll also find it at Walmart. And that's where it belongs. Yes, it's good that it's in health food stores, but we're not catering to the upscale. We're catering to humanity. Matters not where somebody is in the stratosphere. We want everybody to know about this. So look for that one. There are other good ones. I like um, Hahnemann Pharmacy in California. They're represented highly in some of the, um, the local stores in um, uh, Southern and, well, and Northern California. And then there are pharmacies that I work with once if someone becomes a client or a student of mine, then they have access to a pharmacy that is only available, uh, that is not available to the general public. But Boron is a very good company, B-O-I-R-O-N, little blue Got tubes. It. And what's fascinating about this is the little blue tube of that Ignatia Amara is costs about $12 wow. American. <laughs> that is awesome, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I know we've all kind of seen it, you know, depending on where you're shopping. Now it's at Walmart. So this is great. And I'm sure you can find, we're making sure we're linking her website and all these different resources in that email. So you'll be able to find it there too. Her website, you'll find it all there. Um, so I guess we kind of answered that question uh, about where to find these. I had like, where do we find these products? But we're no, we're going to go to your site. We're going to go to these places. It's not hard um, to find. They're not hard to find. But also if you go to my site, and you read my blog and it tells you, for example, Ignatia Amara 200C, it's in blue, shows that it's linked. Click on the link and it takes you directly to either Boron or to Amazon. Now, if you go to Boron and you're ready to check out, if you put my name in there, Joette, just my first name, Joette, J-O-E-T-T-E, -E, you get a discount. Ooh, you guys, yeah. Yeah. first name, Joette. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I, yes, yes. I also have to mention, I don't have an affiliate program with anyone. I don't get kickbacks on that. I do that very purposely. That's the paradigm that has ruined modern medicine. If the doctor tells you this is the drug you need, 
and then sends you to some place that he's going to get a kickback from. How pure is that? Yeah. Not very pure. It, there's, there's, there's a level that no one knew about for a very long time, but of course now the jig is up. But, and it's the same thing with all the tests. They get kickbacks. They're not called kickbacks. They have euphemisms for all of these words, but they essentially get kickbacks for the tests that they send. So you're wondering, why did I go through all those tests? Well, figure out who ordered them. And look, I am not going to tell you folks that I do not like modern uh, medical doctors. There is a place for modern medicine, um, but it's overused. And the pyramid is upside down. First, you start with yourself. Get knowledgeable. Learn how to use this stuff and other methods as well, but mostly homeopathy. Learn how to use this. If you can't figure it out, then go to a doctor and get a diagnosis. Once you get a diagnosis, now go back and learn how to treat that homeopathically. If, you have, if you're in an automobile accident, you're not going to go to a homeopath. You're going to go to the emergency room, of course. If you have a lump, in a suspicious lump, and you don't, and, you're, and the doctor is pretty certain that by palpating it, there's something that's, that is suspicious, of course you go for the tests. But to go for tests just because, superfluous. Yeah. I always tell people the same thing with the well baby checkup. Stop hunting for a disease. Right. Stop so looking for a disease. Stop going to the doctor to find out only, oh my gosh, you know what you've got? You've got polyps. Well, so what? You have polyps. So what? Oh my gosh, you've got fibromyalgia. Well, yeah, I guess I've had a little soreness here, but did I have to know that? And now I got to take a drug for it? Just live your life. When you come up against something, then it is right. Coming. Right. It's all about education. Do your research. Become it's a different way of thinking. It's a yes. completely, and we have to undo all of those women's magazines that say, get to a doctor or ask your doctor if, or you need to do this. If you're 40 years old, you should be going for mammograms. If you're 50 years old, you should be going for colonoscopies. Who said, no. who said that? An industry said it. An industry who needs you to, to comply oh, with well, that in yeah. order to survive. So if you just get past that understanding and stop thinking about, I have to do this and I must do that and I'll, I'll, I'll do what I'm told, that's the answer. Never do as you're told. Never, ever Love it. do as you're told. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Unless you're a child and you're listening. Now you listen to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it. We're on fire today. Truths of the universe are here. I love it. We listen to ourselves. We're the infinite wisdom. We do, there is a place for medical, you know, Western medicine. And, and there's, a, there's a place for emergencies. There's a place for this stuff. But there's also a place for right here, right now, this honest truth, this purity, this natural medicines that are right here. The, the gifts that we are and have at our fingertips are much more powerful and safe. So we should always go to those first. I'm loving this, Joette. Can you tell us about your free gift? Because she's giving more, you guys. It doesn't stop. What is the free gift, that the info sheet that you're giving us? Yeah, it's, it's an infographic and they simply go to joettecalabrese.com forward slash happiness. So joettecalabrese.com forward slash happiness. Happiness, and then download the infographic. And what it is, is Lola, who is my little person that we draw, and she has all these conditions that are um, sadness and anxiety and worry and insomnia, et cetera. And we have all of the medicines that are specific written all around her exactly how to use them. Ooh, that is gold. I love that. It's, it's a nice sheet. I've seen it already, guys. It's, Lola's cute. She's yeah. cute and she's just like us. And, and you can find whatever it is that we're going through in that moment. You can pull that sheet up. And and I'm curious, the, the medicine that is listed next to Lola, is this something that can we, hype? is that hyperlinked too? How no, it's not hyperlinked. No, it's not. But, but it wouldn't take much just to put in there that name of that medicine and boron. Okay. Just okay. B-O-I-R-O-N or Boron and go right to their site and order the medicine. Or if you trust Amazon, then you go to Amazon and look under uh, the name of the medicine. You don't even okay, have to so say anything, just the name of the medicine. But I heard there are a lot of medicines on, you have to be a little bit savvy when you buy from Amazon. They do have some medicines that are called homeopathics and they are not 
uh, they're not from the US. Um, I fear that they might be from China. I don't really know. Um, and so that's why I suggest that people buy from Boron online. Okay. So just copy and paste the name of that, put Boron yes. in front of it, and there, there you guys go. You got it. There it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, I would love to hear. Well, first, let me thank you, Joette. Let me thank you for your time, your energy, your truth, your rawness. I just love the authenticity that is coming across, and it's all beauty. It's all love. So thank you so much for your time and wisdom on homeopathy here and other things we talked about. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. It's been a complete pleasure, Derica. Awesome. And thank you guys for watching. I know your minds are like, wow, like mine is. Hit replay. Get that download, you guys. And if you love this vital, believe me, this very vital, important recipe here, you're also going to love the next one coming up. Keep smiling, you guys, and keep trusting your source. Keep going for your happiness. Much love. Bye-bye.